Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to install Ubuntu 20.04 on a VM. And although I will be doing this on a VM, VM means virtual machine, it is the exact same procedure if you do it on a physical machine. I wanted to do this tutorial because I see many people being able to install Ubuntu pretty easily, but they get stuck in certain areas or get confused when certain errors pop up during the installation process due to misconfiguration. I will be explaining each and every part of the installing process for you. Yeah, let's begin. So this is the first page that you will come up with when you start the installation ISO. This is the live server version. There is a text version which is a bit better in my opinion but uh, most people have to deal with this so here we just have to choose our language which is of course english for me and uh, here it is asking if we wanted to update the installer in this case i won't be updating because that won't be needed for me they're asking for keyboard layout uh, basically it depends on what kind of keyboard you have but since this is a virtual machine I will just leave it to default and for most people they will be using an English US keyboard anyway so that is fine although there is this uh, button uh, which you can use to identify which keyboard you have it will ask a few easy questions and yeah let's move on from here so this is the internet configuration so if you have a DHCP server running like me then your DHCP uh, value the DHCP server will automatically pick up everything that it has to do like all the network configuration but there can be cases where there is no uh, DHCP and you might need to configure network manually so I s so I will be configuring a this statically myself so let's do this so first I will navigate using my arrow keys to here and then I can select either automatic I can either disable IPv4 or IPv6 either one and or I can do manual by default on the installer IPv6 is disabled but if you want you can configure it right now. So first here we will have to type in the subnet. Now what I see is that some people confuse this and they don't know what to do. They go for 255, 255, 255, .0, which is not acceptable because it is looking for your actual subnet this does uh, this is one downside you could say i found with uh, ubuntu they have tried to be intuitive with the user but they have failed here so what you need to do is that uh, i will show you my ip configuration which is a slash 32 and i'm trying to assign dot 100 and my gateway is dot one. Now here, when you are when you try to configure it as a slash thirty two, it won't work. But what you can do is that you can configure it as a slash twenty four, which should work, even if it's a slash thirty two, because that's how my network is configured. But if you do have issues, uh that is no like uh, you can select depending on what your network configuration is so yeah i will put the subnet which is dot zero slash 24 then i will put in my address which if you remember was 74246.100 and my gateway was dot one zero three one seven four two four six dot one name servers so here there are name servers which is basically your dns what dns do you want to use for me i'll just use 1.1.1 oh 1.1 and i can also use multiple 
DNS servers if I wanted. I can use 8.8.8 as my secondary, let's say. And then here, search domains. It is just, uh, many people don't know what search domains is and honestly can leave this alone. But what it does is that it will basically, every time uh, you set up a name server, it will periodically search for this domain and see if it can fetch a record for this domain. And if it doesn't, it will think that you don't have either internet access or uh, the name servers are not working. So here you can leave it alone if you just want it to work and I wouldn't bother with it either. But if you want, you can put any domain here as long as it is resolvable by your DNS servers. So I'll just save it and as you can see done if you are not conf if your network configuration hasn't been configured properly it will say continue without network here so that is a way to indicate that you have not configured your network properly so yeah let's uh, move on from here if you want to use a proxy you can do that here i won't so i will skip this this is the mirror so as you know linux has different mirrors and different repositories that's how it works for this you can use uh, anything for me this uh, server is in us and this is fine for me if you have your own mirrors for ubuntu you can use that here and yeah i'll just skip this I won't be going into this configuration in this tutorial. I will be having another tutorial for specifically this configuration. But yeah, for this, I will just leave it alone. This is fine and let's skip this. So as you can see, when I chose to use that, there's some free space here what ubuntu likes to do is that it will leave a little free space or it won't use the entire space i don't know what, why it does that as you can see my uh device is only 20 gigs meanwhile this uh this is actually 40 gigs like this disk is 40 gigs so just be reminded of that whenever you're doing something again i won't be going into this configuration in this tutorial so i will leave it as it is it's just asking for a confirmation and here we can type anything we want i'll just type ubuntu ubuntu this is your username for your new user that will be created this is the server's name i'll leave it to ubuntu this will be basically the host name of your server and you cannot you you're limited to these characters only username uh this will be again ubuntu password i'll set a really good password trust me same for here and done advantage token you can leave this blank in almost all cases so yeah and here you can install OpenSSH server. Now this is where uh, people just skip this, and then they have to figure out why SSH doesn't work later on. I've seen freshers do this a lot, so I'll just tell you like OpenSSH server install it. Even if your boss says you can't, just install it. This is an option to import your SSH identity if you have. You can do it using GitHub or Launchpad. Uh, I don't want to import my SSH keys over, so I'll just skip this. And here, one thing about Ubuntu is that you can install it prepackaged with any of these packages. It can be Docker, Nextcloud, uh, it can be AWS CLI if you want to use Google uh, Cloud SDK you can do that here there is a lot of things you can do here but we are just gonna install the Ubuntu installer just a default installation 
so I'm just gonna click done and done so now we don't have to do anything more this is fine it might take some time or you can choose to look at this but in most cases you will be leaving this alone just let it do its thing and yeah don't have to do anything here after a while it will say reboot now which I will show you and uh, you're done we have successfully installed Ubuntu you can log in using the uh, username and password that you said before and yeah I will pause the recording now so it doesn't get too long but yeah so this was done and as you can see I'm getting this error now some people might worry and think oh something went wrong with my installation but I'm here to tell you this is just fine it's because this is a virtual machine it doesn't want to unmount it you just press enter a few times this will force it to reboot and as you can see it is just fine Ubuntu is gonna load any second now and the installation is done there we go we have Ubuntu now I can log in using my username and my super secret password that I set and uh, oh okay all right as you can see now it is fine and running and this is a healthy machine so yeah this is the end of the tutorial let me know if you have any suggestions on how I should do these vi videos in the future or how I should or any topics I should look into so yeah this is it let me know if you like it thanks for watching